Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and happy holidays to you and your families. You know, for the last couple of weeks, I've been over on my Discord channel, the link to that's in the description below, having a conversation with a great bunch of panelists on a variety of subjects. But we wanted to touch back on Flat Earth, so I thought the best way to do that would be to go into the studio and issue a friendly little holiday challenge to my Flat Earth colleagues. I'd like to restate a few of those points here and challenge my friends in the Flat Earth to either come to the Discord and discuss them with us to show how these could possibly occur on a flat and stationary Earth, or to make their own video, making sure to tag me so that I can see it, and we'll see what you have to say. So, without further ado, let's cue up the music and get started with the questions. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with a relatively simple problem. There is no reason that on a flat and stationary Earth, an object of known mass should have a different weight depending on where it is on that flat and stationary Earth, or how fast and in what direction it is moving over the flat and stationary Earth. However, there's a problem with that, because in reality, that's not what we see. If you were to take a mass, a, say a 500 gram mass, and measure it on a calibrated precision spring scale, it will say that it weighs 500 grams. However, if you take it into an airplane, it will have a different weight depending on whether you are flying west or east. This is called the Utvos effect, and it is well described and understood on a rotating spherical Earth. Please explain to me how you can account for this weight difference on a flat and stationary Earth. Now, likewise, we find if we calibrate that same precision spring scale to that same 500 gram mass in, say, Perth, Australia, and we move it to a different latitude, either closer to the South Pole or closer to the equator, we find that it has a different weight. Yet, when we return it to Perth, it weighs 500 grams again. So there's your first question. How do you explain the different weights of the same mass on the same scale based on location or whether or not it's going east or west over a flat and stationary Earth? Good luck with that one. Okay, so here's another major problem for the flat Earth. At any time during daylight, the sun is directly over a single spot on the Earth. And that spot is always located between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Now here's the problem. I live in northern Michigan at the 45th parallel. I am well north of the Tropic of Cancer. Yet in the summer, the sun rises in the northeast from my house. How can the sun appear to be north of my house? when it has to be located above a spot on the Earth well south of my house. This is easily explained on a globe. Please give me an explanation as to how this works on a flat and stationary Earth. Now the flat Earth is famous for taking some scientific theories and laws and taking them to heart while rejecting others. For example, the second law of thermodynamics is beloved by the flat Earth and young earth creationism and anti-evolutionism, etc. However, the universal law of gravity is rejected. So, here's a question related to the second law of thermodynamics. We're all quite familiar with this clip from MIT, where they said that if you had two containers attached by a tube, one of which had gas pressure in it, the other had a vacuum, and you opened up the pipe between the two, we all know what would happen. The air pressure would equalize between the gas pressure and the vacuum. That's very well understood. Now here's a question for you. Can you pull the air out of one of those containers and put it back in the other, creating
creating gas pressure in a vacuum? That's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is, would the pressure be equal in both of those containers? Would a gas expand in all directions to form an equal pressure? If so, how is it that we have a pressure gradient on the flat stationary earth? If there was a dome above us containing this pressure, it would be uniform from top to bottom. And here is a bonus question for you. If sea level air pressure or atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch and the column of air above that square inch had a uniform gas pressure in it as required by the second law of thermodynamics, how high would the dome be? And to test your understanding of the second law of thermodynamics, work is defined as the displacement of mass by the application of a force. How does this come into play in our atmosphere? How do we develop a pressure gradient rather than a uniform pressure? Those are questions that you will have to address in your video too to successfully answer this question. Now those first questions were just a warm up. For our final question, I want to tackle one of the greatest questions in the flat earth, and that is the R value. Now a sphere has certain qualities. It has a radius, it has a circumference, it has a diameter, and it has a surface area. Given any of those values, we can use some eighth grade math and determine the other values. So let's look at the ways we find the size of the Earth. Now the first method is that of Eratosthenes. We use the noon sun and measure the shadow cast by a stick compared to another known location a distance away, and we use that to calculate the circumference of the Earth. Next, we had Al Biruni. We go to a mountain of known height and we find the dip angle to the horizon from that mountain. The third is the darling of the flat Earth, the we see too far measurement. And that is that if we look at a distant object beyond the horizon, we can measure how much of that object is visible compared to its total size and use that to measure the radius of the Earth. And finally, we can measure the direct distance between any two points on the surface of the Earth to a very good level of precision. And we can use that to determine the radius of the Earth. Now here's the problem for the flat Earth. All of those different types of measurements come back to approximately the same radius. How do you explain that? That's called scientific congruency. Even though we measure by a variety of different means, both visually and over the ground, it all comes back to the same answer. How does that work on a flat earth? Well, those are the questions, so flat earth, have at them. Now, one other thing that you can talk about if you want is the black swan photo. That's the uh, picture of the oil rigs off the California coast where we quote unquote see too far. And the radius of the earth, according to quantum eraser, is some 265,000 miles. Well, it's still a sphere with a radius of 265,000 miles. You haven't disproven the globe Earth. You've just claimed that you've disproven the radius. Whoop-de-doo. What is the radius of a flat plane? Infinity. So, any of these measurements that come back with a radius of less than infinity still talk about a sphere. Just pointing that out for you. Well, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hey, thanks again for stopping by. Make sure you hit a like and subscribe. Now, if you want to support the channel, we've got memberships and a Patreon, and that Patreon especially goes into more telescope equipment. So, give generously. Thank you again for stopping by and for your support of this channel, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.